Welcome. Um, we're so excited that you're able to join us for a quick conversation today about the new trainer requirements. Um, uh, hopefully you've had an opportunity to read the information that we sent out previously, because today, as you notice, we just scheduled a half an hour. Our thought was just to hit the highlights, um, knowing you'd already looked at the information and then save most of the time for questions. So definitely feel free to enter those in the Q&A. We will um, do the questions after this brief kind of overview. Um, so just wanted to um, get started. We always like to remember why it is we do what we do. Um, and I hope you do that at your organizations. We're really looking um, at community and we're looking at people uh, being a part of their community and uh, looking at quality of life and how to how to improve that and how to know that we're doing that by using some data. So just wanted to hit the highlights um, as long as I have you all about certification, the reason that we think that certification is important at CQL, and, and ultimately it's about re increasing the validity and the reliability of all that information that you're gathering. So you're spending a lot of time and energy with people and we want you to be getting the, the best information you can so that you can use that uh, confidently. And so that's why we believe that certification is important. And we believe that um, the point of trainer certification is for activities to be in place for you to maintain and refine both your interviewing skills and your training skills. So the highlights for us about benefits of certification is consistency. It's a way to, of staff development for you to empower the people supported by uh, being able to do an excellent job with the interactions you're having, that you're demonstrating that you're interested in quality and that you're able to have responsive services, that it helps you with your strategic planning for your organization. It helps you think about best practices it obviously is intended to uh, help you as you move further and further down the path of person-centered approaches to improve the information gathering that you uh, engage in with people and help um, inform the planning process for the individuals and looking at their goals and their priority outcomes. And then as an organization at that level, being able to really look at the data you're collecting and how to use that data and, and how to make uh, decisions based on that data. So that's our um, kind of highlights about why we believe certification is important. And obviously most of you do too, because I believe most of you on the call are certified. So hopping into what's going on with the trainer requirements. So first of all, the things that have not changed. So we have certification available for um, personal outcome measures for adults, as well as personal outcome measures for children and youth. So adults are 18 and over, children and youth are ages five through 17. And we continue to have that two year certification term and certification continues to only be available through CQL. So as certified trainers, you're able to provide training to individuals in your organizations and networks, but it's only CQL that can do the actual certification. So the process, again, the things that haven't changed are the steps, kind of the path to certification. This is the big picture, and this is straight off our website, if you ever needing to look at that. Um, that we use that train the trainer model. You attend a workshop, um, do some practicing, have some coaching, um, have an inter-rater reliability assessment. Then you have an opportunity to observe and be trained um, to do a workshop. Then you have that opportunity to do the workshop while we observe. You become certified and then you engage in the activities over the course of those two years and then become recertified. So drilling down into that, just also because we talked to you about steps one, two, three, and four, and I wanna make sure that we kind of reinforce what it is we're talking about. So that first step is that participation in a POM workshop. And for someone seeking certification, that can be in any workshop conducted by a certified POM in a trainer. 
So that can be a uh, workshop conducted by CQL. It can also be a workshop that you as certified trainers are conducting within your organization. Then that second step is that time with CQL to have coaching where you can observe CQL staff doing interviews and be mentored through the decision-making process. And then the step of you actually completing an interview while we observe do separate uh, decision-making, compare decision-making, ensure that there's at least an 85% uh, reliability there, as well as the other part of that, as you know, who have gone through um, uh, IRRs or the whole issue about how to be a good interviewer, what those skills are for interviewing. Then that third step where you are partnered up with CQL staff you're observing them conducting the workshop and they are providing you the information and training that you need to feel prepared to do a workshop yourself. Then that step four, you actually conduct the workshop and CQL staff observes, gives you feedback and, and you move forward on your certification journey. So the things that have changed, the reason we're here today. So we decided, you know, it's been just a little over four years since we instituted, we made that change from a one-year certification term to two-year certification term and instituted what have been the current requirements for interviewers and trainers. So today we're just looking at the trainer requirements. We have not made any changes to the interviewer recertification requirements. So as previously, there's a requirement for the eight hours of continuing education. And the big change here is in the, the level of activities and, and the mix of activities. So what's required as, as of now, basically, we had to set a date. So we said December 1st, but um, it's, it's effective for wherever you happen to be in your certification journey. So the requirement is that you engage over those two years in 24 days of POM-related activities, basically. And within those 24 days, you have to have a minimum of two POM workshops. And we're having those workshops count as four days, regardless of whether they're in-person and virtual, as you know, um, or maybe you don't, um, if you haven't been looking at the virtual um, process. The in-person is four days, the virtual is five days, but the trainer is really only engaging in um, predominantly three days of those five. So we just made a decision, a workshop, whether it's in-person or virtual counts for four days, and then a minimum of six POM interviews, and that will count as, a POM interview counts as a day. And this was really important to us. The options you had previously, one of the options would have allowed you to not have ever done another interview. <laughs> if you chose the option that was all workshops. We feel very strongly that the, to be a good trainer of the POM uh, process, you need to be a good interviewer. And so that's why we've put this minimum of the POM interviews. That leaves you 10 days. And so those 10 days can be any combination of doing more workshops, doing more interviews, or doing um, CQL approved customized training. And we're gonna go into that in a little depth in just a minute. And then of course, to be recertified um, after that two years and you've engaged in these required number of activities that you're then successful at, at another inner rate of reliability assessment. So that in a nutshell are the new requirements. So if you have questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A. Um, so just to attend to the fact that some of you um, might be certified in both measures. And so you're wondering, how does this uh, uh, affect me? Just an easy way to think about it is it's gonna be the same number of days and you're going to need to split those activities basically half and half. So half of them would be in adult activities and half of them in children and youth activities. It's one of the upshot of that. So the customized training, 
which I think is a very viable way for you to continue to refine your skills and utilize your skills um, in the area of personal outcome measures. And um, I think there's been some confusion about it. Um, some of you have been doing it and others not. And I, I think um, it's worth me thinking about. Um, you develop the customized training. You're using uh, our potentially some of the slides that we've created for the workshop. Um, you're using obviously our concepts, our materials, but you're creating your own training. And those trainings would be designed to share things related to the personal outcome measures. So and it's really designed to meet your needs at your organization. And so just wanted to throw out some ideas of what that might look like to get you thinking about it. So you might create a one day overview for DSPs. You might create an hour or two training for board members, other stakeholders, families. Um, you might create different training for the people you support about the personal outcome measures. It's critical for them to understand, you know, what this is that they're doing. And certainly you're going over the, the guide and informed consent when you're doing an interview, but it would be valuable training um, for the people supported. And you could break it into different chunks, into different concepts. Um, some of you have done uh, very nice trainings around rights, some of those kind of things. It might be training for your DSPs about how to use the information that you gather during that POM interview, how to you know, embed that in their activities with, as they support people. Um, you might have a one day training about just one of the outcomes or one of the concepts of the important values in the personal outcome measures. You might include curriculum in your new staff orientation during those, whatever those days are that you're onboarding staff. You might create a refresher or a coaching course for staff, perhaps you're the support at your organization for other people who are doing POM interviews. Perhaps you bring them together and have a, a time where you review things, where you problem solve, those kind of things. Really, it's open to your creativity um, in terms of what that customized training might look like. And so the process is you create it um, and then you send it to uh, training at the council.org to get approved. And what we need to have or you know, uh, an understanding about what the training is, you know, who it's for, how long it is, an agenda. Um, you know, if you've got notes and um, instructions, handouts, and then for most of you, you know, the, the bulk of it is based around a PowerPoint, um, and that might have your speaker's notes there, um, any sort of trainer's guide. So that, that's the piece of customized training. So you've got, if we go back and we look, you are looking at, over the course of two years, 24 days of POM-related activities, at least two workshops, at least six interviews, and then 10 days to do um, what makes the most sense and what's most useful to you and your organization, okay? So we're starting now, and it applies to everybody, regardless of where you happen to be in your journey. So if you just got certified, uh, if you're in the middle of getting certified, if, you're, if it's time for you to um, have your um, recertification IRR, wherever you are in the journey, these are the requirements that will be applied for you, okay? And we did want to remind you that while we have these new requirements, we are not uh, doing anything different than we have been doing the last couple of years in terms of trying our best to support you to be able to achieve the activities required so that you can become recertified. And so we have been flexible. We, um, You can ask for um, extensions. We can talk about um, different ways to help you these new activities, these new requirements should help you to a great degree in terms of some more flexibility there. Um, what we do ask is that you make sure and submit your recertification application 
before your current term expires. Even if you're wanting an extension or you need some help to brainstorm about how to come in to, um, to adhere to the requirements, please send or complete that application. We have updated that application, made it even easier. Um, and so when you go to our website, if you click on the certification tab, you'll scroll down and you'll see a link to the trainer recertification application that you will simply complete there online and it will be sent. So you don't need to have the extra step of an email to us. When you're getting ready to do that, the things you need to have in mind as you sit down to fill that out is you need to know your expiration date. You get a certificate from us, so you should be keeping that and know um, what that date is. You just check the box about which, um, whether it's adult, children, and youth, or both, uh, letting us know whether you want to do that recertification in person or virtually, acknowledging it, it lays out those requirements, acknowledging that you've met those. There's a space for you to enter the actual numbers of those activities. So you need to actually put in the number of each of those things. Uh, gives you some uh, date preferences. So we have a sense about when you're looking at wanting to do this. If we have questions or there's uh, issues and there's a comment box in there, if you have some things that you want to talk to us about, then we create the letter of engagement that goes out to you, your organization, uh, with the details uh, and um, understanding that this is an agreement between us. And then for recertification, the, the quality enhancement specialist who's assigned to do this is gonna reach out to you and you will um, decide on a date that works best for you. So that basically you know, is not any different than it has been. The new um, application I believe will make it easier for you. So that's my 15, 18 minutes of uh, talking fast and uh, my brief overview of what the information we've sent to you. So um, this is your opportunity if you have questions uh, to ask. Um, I see, um, can you please show the slide on how to get the trainings approved? Absolutely, I'll just click right back to that right now. And as you're doing that, Angela, a reminder to everyone that we will be sending out a link to the PDF version of the PowerPoint slides uh, sometime next week. So you'll have all these slides as well for, for, for those. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So you're going to basically just describe what it is you're doing, who you're doing it with, how long, um, whatever notes, uh, agendas, PowerPoints, all of the information, and you're going to submit that to training at the council.org. And then we'll send you a response. Oftentimes I might have requests or suggestions for some uh, changes or tweaks to your materials. Um, and I can tell you one of the most common ones is that um, asking to trademark the word personal outcome measures requires a trademark. The acronym POM does not require a trademark, but that often is, is one of the things that I, for the most part, the trainings that people have submitted, the content has been fabulous. It's more often kind of fine tuning things. More questions? I talked really fast. I can't believe you don't have any questions. Um, we have somebody who's, oh, there we go. Um, if my term expired during the pandemic, what recourse do I have? We have resumed conducting interviews and trainings. What you need to do is um, reach out, send me an email, and we will chat. That's what we've been doing is handling those things on a totally individual basis. We'll talk about when it expired, how long ago it expired, how many activities you actually have. In some cases, if you have um, had certification previously, but it's been a long time, like a couple years um, or longer, then we might say that you need to do a coaching day, or we might um, say that you uh, participate in a hosted palm workshop or talk about those sorts of things. So there might be some additional requirements if it's been a long time. Um, but those things we are just really wanting you to know we're there to talk with you. Um, and kind of problem solve through that and see what we can do to make that work. 
another great question is what proof do you need to show of the required trainings, workshops, and interviews? Fabulous question. Um, we expect you to keep that documentation. So obviously, if you uh, participate in trainings that we do, we provide certificates. We do not provide certificates for webinars, the free ones that we do. So you would keep track of that. However works for you, um, you can um, have a spreadsheet, you can um, you know, have it written down somewhere, what, however it works for you. And noting how many of the interviews that you've done. So we uh, assume that you are honest and trustworthy and you will provide that information to the QES when it's time for your recertification. Um, oh, well, here's good news. Our organization developed custom trainings and CQL made the process very easy. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Um, there are some times I have not been as prompt as I would like to, and uh, feel free if, I, if you've not heard from me to um, give me a nudge. Um, I'm working on um, a template and, and speeding that up. And there's a question, is this a state DDD requirement? I'm not sure what state that is, and um, CQL certification and for the personal outcome measures, I am unaware of any state that requires that, but if you have more details about that, you can always reach out with an email to me. I'd be happy to chat with you. Um, another great question, can you remind me of the cost of recertification? Absolutely. So um, obviously the last couple of years, everything's been done virtually. And to be quite honest, that has been going very well. And I see it as a very viable option to continue. So a uh, virtual recertification is $1,200. If we come and do an on-site um, uh, recertification, it's $1,750 plus the travel. So as you can see, it's much more cost effective to do it virtually. And when we first started to do that, of course, we were all nervous that it wouldn't be as valuable, but um, so far we've really felt like that has worked well. Would trainings conducted on the basic assurances count as a workshop day? No, it would be good. That's Heather, if you reach out to me, we can chat more. It, they certainly, um, if you are watching the basic assurance webinars count towards your continuing education. Um, we, this is all related to the personal outcome measures, but you could be, you know, um, doing training about rights. Certainly some of the, the, values and the concepts that cross between the personal outcome measures and the basic assurances and perhaps um, accomplish both. So feel free to reach out to me if you want to chat more about that. Um, so then there's a question, have we ever considered if the providers involved were okay with it about providing an opportunity for approved additional trainings to be shared or accessible to others for inspiration or ideas. Great um, idea, great thought. Um, I will definitely like note that down and start thinking about how we might facilitate that. Certainly one way that is easy enough right now is um, through our e-community, which we always strongly encourage people to check out on Facebook. Um, and people routinely ask for resources there, and I've only experienced people to be very uh, generous with their resources. So that that would be a, a certainly a place to start. Um, and um, but a good point, Christina, and I will do some more thinking about how to kind of operationalize that. Um, if we do a two-hour training. For example, during the new staff orientation, does that only count as two hours of a day? No, the, the happy answer is that'll be a day. So when you're engaging in a training activity, um, whether it's two hours or eight hours, we're just trying to make this as simple as possible and as useful as possible. You know, our goal again is to help you refine your training skills, refine and, and maintain your interviewing skills, to be helping you um, 
be a benefit to your organization related to the personal outcome measures. So it's really more of an activity counts as a day. Um, can you please share your email so that I can, oh, I'm, they're popping around, so popping. I, I <laughs> uh, my email's at the end, I'll, I'll click over here. Um, my email is at the end on this. And it's always, if you go to our website, if you go to the About CQL, you can get to the staff um, and you can click on any of our emails so you can always find us there. Um, and Angela, I just take the chat box for everyone too. Great, thank you very much. Um, I've only done the two day workshop many years ago. Okay, so that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> um, we're a very small organization and I'm basically the only staff who has knowledge of the interview. Well, I can tell you, Kimberly, that we are very uh, aware and have been having very active discussions about how to support those very small organizations to be able to financially and time-wise be able to implement the personal outcome measures. And so we are not ready to release any information or um, plans yet, but we are definitely in the discussion and planning phases for um, how we can support those organizations. You know, obviously if you don't even have 12 staff, you wouldn't, <laughs> You wouldn't need a workshop, two workshops, you know, if you're only supporting a handful of people. Um, and so we we really are very tuned into that. And as I said, are actively working on plans that I hope early in the new year to share um, about how to make that more accessible. Um, a question, do we have to have a certified? <laughs> Um, no, there is the only requirement um, or the only time you are required to have a certified um, trainer and interviewers or if you are uh, seeking and um, achieving PCED accreditation. We strongly encourage people to obviously go through the training and be certified if at all possible because we clearly see that the um, the data is very different. Um, we, as you know, when you enter in, for those of you who use portal, you identify whether you are certified or not, and we track that data separately. And I can tell you that the data is quite different. And the difference predominantly is that those um, interviewers who are not certified are much more likely to believe that um, outcomes and supports are in place than somebody who's certified. So that's really a major difference. A question is, are certifications valid for one year or two years? All of our certifications are valid for two years. Great questions. Um, okay, let's see. What are the requirements for interviewers that attend our POM workshops? Are we required to have interviewers attend a workshop every two years? So if you are asking, I think I understand, um, you as a certified trainer are putting on a, a POM workshop, a four-day in-person or a five-day virtual workshop, and you have people go through that training who are then doing POM interviews in your organization. There is no requirement that we have at CQL for um, what kind of training beyond that that you provide to those interviewers if they are not certified through us. I would say to you, um, that would be an excellent use of your time and, and that customized training option that you would be doing some work to continue helping them maintain and refine their skills. I know in some organizations, the certified uh, trainer um, has times where they meet with the POM interviewers and do some troubleshooting and some training related to different things they're seeing. So um, that really is totally up to you internally in your organization. And a question about do, um, does training through other entities count towards that eight hours? And the answer is that the eight hours is only CQL related 
continuing education. So it would be any of the a plethora of free webinars we have on our website, any uh, training that you might participate in with CQL. If you uh, come to our conference, um, that takes care of you <laughs> for a couple of years. Um, so it, it does have to be CQL um, uh, uh, initiated or a sponsored training. If you go to another conference, say do you go to your provider conference in your state or to a national conference, and there is a CQL staff providing a session, that counts. Okay, we're just a minute over. I'm happy to answer if there's more questions. Um, I'm always happy to talk with you individually um, and um, schedule you know, a Teams call or a, a phone chat or whatever for your individual um, situations. Question, does this training count? Yes, it does, absolutely. So half hour towards those eight hours right here. Okay, well, if there's no other questions, as I said, I really encourage you to reach out. Uh, if you, you know, are thinking about things and you have individual situations, I, I really enjoy um, talking with you. It's, and now that we're all virtual and we do things mostly with Teams or Zoom, we actually get to, to see you. Um, so very happy to kind of problem solve or brainstorm with you. And we just appreciate you all and your commitment. Um, to the values uh, of, that the personal outcome measures, you know, embody. So have a wonderful week and we will uh, talk to you soon. Thanks.